What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about my top five baits for bass fishing in the month of September. September bass fishing finally starting to cool off. You know, August is typically the hottest month of the entire year. It's usually when there's the, the least amount of oxygen in the water, the fish can get lethargic. Uh, but September, you start having those cooler nights. You really start that beginning of the fall transition. September is really a transition month. So there's a lot of things going on. You got water level levels receding. You have water temperatures dropping. You have, you know, you had the shad spawn. So you got tons of little bait fish. You got baby bluegills swimming around and you have cool, cooler water and wind. This feels good. You know, coming off the month of August, been burning up. It's been hot all across the country. But coming across the country, it's just been hot everywhere, right? Everywhere I see is set in like record highs. I'm tired of it. I'm sure the fish are tired of it. September brings cooler weather, cooler water temps, and more active fish. So let's get into my number one bait. You guys know that I love throwing reaction. Yeah, when I have to, I'll slow down and finesse fish, but for the most part, I love throwing crankbaits, swimbaits, topwaters, all that sort of stuff. September is really important to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. You're gonna have to cover, cover a lot of water to try and find those fish that have schooled up. They're gonna be herding that, those bait balls around. They're gonna be chasing bait. So my number one bait to cover water is going to be a topwater. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a Highland Reservoir fisherman, clear deep water, or you're a Tennessee River fisherman when you're fishing miles and miles of grass, a topwater is my number one go-to, okay? I don't care if you're a smallmouth guy. A topwater is a bait that you can cover a lot of water. You can make your target cast, move to the next spot, make five or six casts, move to the next next spot. Uh, a lot of times, this time of the year, this is the start of those fish blowing up and showing you kind of where they are. So if they're in the mats, you'll see them you know, blowing holes in the mats, chasing bluegill and shad. If they're uh, offshore, you'll see them blowing up out in open water on, on threadfin shad, on herring, depends on the type of bait you have in your fishery. But one way or another, those fish are gonna start showing themselves to you and a top water is my number one bait. So this guy right here, gonna simplify it even more for you. This is the Shower Blows 105. Uh, that is the chrome color, and that is hands down my best uh, offshore top water when I'm not around grass and I'm chasing those fish that are eating bait fish. Your thread fins, your herring, your alewives, that sort of stuff, right? Those are your bait fish they're chasing. So spotted bass, primarily sometimes you'll get largemouth and smallmouth offshore too but this guy in that chrome color is my number one go-to another great variation of that would be a bone color something a little bit more uh contrasty you know this thing works really really good in high sun it throws a lot of flash and really mimics the the shiny sides of those bait fish and again that bone color is another one two punch that i like to throw and then for you guys that are in shallow, chasing fish in or around the grass, it's all about the frog. Either a walking frog, something you can cast out, work it real slow, side to side, or some kind of buzz toad or horny toad. This is that spro flapping frog, a frog you can throw out and cover water. Again, it's all about covering water for me this time of the year, finding those active fish. This allows you to fish fish over the tops of the grass, has the kick and feet, so it's a weedless buzz bait. That is my one-two punch in the grass. So just like every video, guys, I will link my favorite baits and colors down below in the video description. But on the top waters, I like the chromes, I like the bones. 
on the frogs, I like the whites, the blacks, and chartreuse. If you can find, sometimes they'll really key in on a frog that has kind of a, a silver or a bait fishy color, maybe some, some flash or some sparkle. Uh, you, can, you can catch them on that as well. Okay, number two, it's gonna be the swim bait. Now, this specific bait, I got three or four different swim baits for you, depending on the size of fish, depending on the, the species that you're targeting, and uh, depending on your, your gear, okay? But my number one swim bait is gonna be this guy right here. This is the burrito, but specifically, it is the five inch. The six inch is an inch bigger, obviously, but it's quite a bit heavier, and uh, you typically need a little bit bigger gear to fish that six inch. So that five inch you can still throw on your favorite jig rod. It's not a very heavy bait. This thing kicks like a champ and they straight choke it. So that guy right there, that is a winner for me. But any type of swim bait. So I have a couple different ones for you. If you're in or around grass, that's when I go weedless. I go with something that uh, has a little bit of flash, so I love that underspin, but I go weedless. That is that owner flashy swimmer with a Kitek 4.8. You can do a 4.3. I'd like that 4.8, a little larger profile. If you're not worried about getting hung up in the grass, you can go with that Gamakatsu underspin. That is a Kitek, that is the 4.3. Little bit smaller, exposed hook, weedless hook, and uh, this comes through and around the grass really, really well. If you need to downsize a little bit, you guys know that sometimes those big fish love to eat small bait. That's where we go with this guy right here. That is the Storm Largo Shad with our underspin. That's the tactical underspin. Real stout hook, so you don't have to worry about bending out the hook on big fish, but that is an awesome finesse package right there. But again, this time of the year, that water temp is cooling. Those fish, the life is getting, it's, it's moving underneath that, that water. The bait fish are moving a lot. The bass are moving a lot. There's lots of things going on with grass. You have some grass dying off. You have fish pulling out of grass mats, going into uh, cleaner or more livelier grass, that greener stuff. So look for that. But uh, that weedless underspin is an awesome way to cover water in and around that grass. You can fish it through it. If you, if you get hung up, you can kind of pop it free and just, just reel that thing just enough that blade is spinning. And again, if the water is just above the grass line, so it's not topped out on the surface, so say the grass, the tops of the grass is maybe eight to 10 inches below the surface, you can fish this right over the top. All right, two down, three to go. Number three, some kind of crankbait. How do you do a uh, September or a beginning fall transition video without talking about the crank? You know, I love crankbaits. <clears throat> Unlike the swim bait, this is a cast and retrieve. If you hit something, you can pop it up, but you don't get a lot of uh, deflection or directional change, that's where this guy really shines. When you're down there pounding uh, rock or mud, just dredging the bottom, and you hit something, it's gonna deflect, and it's gonna shoot off right or left. It's gonna deflect. You can pause it, let that thing float up a little bit. Directional change, you can really take advantage of that bass's predatory instinct to just react and eat, even if it doesn't want to swim over and eat it. You can trigger fish with a crankbait better than you can with a swim bait. So this guy is also in my list. I'm going with my 6XD, my Rapala, my DT16s, DT20s, Tactical DDs. Those are my three top crankbaits. Real good. This is a real aggressive wobble. This is a real tight wobble, more of a finesse bait fish profile or action. Uh, and then that DT is a great bait, especially for forward-facing sonar. It's not a high float bait. So if you want to get that bait down to 16 foot or 20 foot, get it down there in those treetops and then pause, that thing's just going to sit there. It's not a real high float. It's just going to sit there and suspend and that just drives those fish crazy. But a crankbait, you can get down there, 
deflect, get those directional changes, and really trigger those fish into eating. Same goes for up shallow. Now, if you're socked in with grass, it's really, really hard to throw a, a, a square bill. But if you have lanes, or if you have depth over the tops of the grass, you can be uh, really, really effective with throwing a square bill. Just get it down there, taking the tops of the grass, popping it through, letting it float back up, getting real aggressive with these, okay? River to see Biggie, awesome square bill. Real loud knock, Bill Lewis ATV. Fairly quiet. This bait really, really impressed us this year. It is virtually, I'm not going to say virtually, it's really, really hard to get this thing hung up. We threw it through tree branches. We threw it all over the place, purposely trying to get it snagged, and it just comes through the cover really, really well, especially with those EWG hooks on it. Um, it's just one of those things that when those fish are up shallow, they're chasing bait. You can cover a ton of water. You can move that thing really quickly. I'm throwing it on a 7 both the cranks, deep or shallow, seven or an eight to one gear ratio reel. I'm burning, 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 pause. Burning, 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 hit grass, rip, rip, pause. I'm getting real aggressive to get those directional changes, but a crankbait is an awesome bait, and that's why it's in number three on my list. Now, if you find yourself in that scenario where you have fish up shallow, and you can see them either blowing up on the bait or maybe they don't want to come up to the surface but you can see them chasing bait you see boils or whatever that's where i go with this guy right here a number four bait a chatter bait okay doesn't have to be the jackhammer i love the jackhammer it could be the the cross eyes it could be the original chatter bait but some kind of bladed jig either in a flashy bait fish color or a craw color. That goes for my cr uh, my cranks as well. Bait fish colors, ghosty colors. Uh, if there's a little bit of stain in the water, I'll go with my chartreuse and blues. But for the most part, I'm mimicking bait fish. So craw patterns or bait fish. Again, that is the Yamamoto Zako. And that is the Spunk Shad. An awesome, awesome trailer on a chatterbait. This guy right here, comes through the grass really well, especially with those uh, real stout hook guard. Really, really weedless, so I really like that guy. Again, I'm going fast, I'm in and around that grass. If I get that chatterbait hung up in the grass, I'm, I'm ripping it out, and a lot of times that's when you're going to get that rod load up and you've got the fish on. As that thing kind of slingshots out of the grass, a lot of times that's when you get bit on the chatterbait. So if you're a shallow guy, and you can't fish the square bill, try the chatterbait. Now, last but not least, my number five bait or my number five category for catching bass in the month of September is going to be a jerk bait. Believe it or not, I did not put a finesse technique in my top five. Again, it's specifically because these fish are active. They are up, they are chewing, uh, they are trying to eat as many bait fish as possible. So why not take advantage of you know covering water, finding those, those active fish and just loading the boat, right? You don't wanna sit there and just, I mean, you might have to, you try these five and, and six and seven and eight and nine, maybe your 10th choice might be a Ned rig. It might be a shaky head or a, a wacky rig Senko, right? But five, it's all reaction for me. So two different scenarios, just like the square bill. If you can get around docks, uh, get around hard cover, lay downs, shallower rock, I'm going with a traditional jerk bait. Ooh, this wind feels good. Hopefully I'll be able to edit it out on the computer and take some of this wind out if it's bad. Um, but I tell you what, man, it feels good after it's been blazing hot all day. If you're a uh, in or around the grass, so you find yourself in the chatterbait situation or the frog situation, you got to go with 
the weedless jerkbait. Either the Zoom, the Super Fluke, Xzone has an awesome one, Yamamoto has an awesome one. I'll link my favorites down below in the video description, but some kind of weedless soft plastic jerkbait. You can pop, 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 get this thing skipping, kill it, let it fall down the edge of the grass line. You watch your line, doop, pop, 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 get that thing going. You can get real active with it. But again, these fish are in that grass. They're in that lively grass. And sometimes it's a pain to try and fish a lot of hooks around that grass. So that is where I absolutely love throwing a fluke or a version of a fluke, a soft plastic jerk bait. Again, you can let it fall down in that grass. You can work it as aggressive or as slow as you want and the fish just come out and eat it. Guys, that's it. That's my top five baits for the month of September. Remember, it's a transition month. You know, you might have been on a really good top water bite July and August. Now the water's dropping a little bit. The water's cooling a little bit. Grass is kind of slimming up. It's dying. Those fish are moving. You might have to go subsurface. Go with your crankbait. Go with your flashy swimmer or your soft jerkbait. But these five baits consistently catch fish throughout the country no matter which lake or fishery I'm on. A one of these or a version of these have caught fish for me all across the country. Down below in the video description, I will link my favorite uh, baits in each category, colors, hooks, all that good stuff, gear, rods, reels, all that good stuff that you will need to fish these baits properly. But that's it. That's my top five baits for the month of September. Remember, cover water, find those active fish, and you could have the best day of the entire summer right now. Guys, we appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.